fellow Scratchers! I hope you had a whole lot of fun with your jump pads and jump rings from last episode. Today we have something perhaps even more exciting, the Gravity Portals. A yellow portal that flips all player movement upside down, and a blue portal that brings us back down again. This can get real exciting, especially as it applies equally to other game modes like our ship, or the jump pads and rings. Wow! For those who don't want to draw the assets themselves, feel free to borrow the ones I prepared earlier, which can be backpacked from my Scratch Asset Project linked under the video. Okay then, are you ready? Guys, let's get scratching! Once you've saved your project as a new copy, grab some Gravity Portal assets and bring them straight into our level. Now I'm not quite sure where I'll position them, how about we have a jump ring bounce us into the yellow gravity flipping portal. Once again, this is another unique yellow colour, so that it doesn't get confused with the other yellow triggers. Now when gravity flips, the player will shoot upwards, so we need to make sure there is something solid up there to stop us falling off into outer space! Now, I'll just grab a row of tiles from another scene and drop them in above the portal. Continuing it on into the following scene. The reverse gravity portal can be taken into the following scene too to give us a little bit more time to play. So it's worth a test to ensure the yellow portal doesn't cause any erroneous triggering. Yep, that seems okay. I could jump straight through the yellow gravity portal without it getting in my way or triggering a jump. Making sure the level sprite is visible on the stage and then click into the player sprite. We'll set up the triggering event. Find the main menu script and to keep track of whether gravity has flipped, I'll make a new variable, naming it up for all sprites. Right away, we will set up to one. So even in the game menu, we begin the correct way up. This needs copying into the game on script also, so that it resets with the level attempt. Now to check for portal activations. That's in the define check portal code. We'll add a new if to the very bottom. Checking whether we are touching color. And we'll select the fill color of that bright yellow portal. And all we do is set the up variable to negative one. So that up becomes down and down becomes up. Oh, this is going to be fun. Now duplicate that if condition, as we'll also set up the gravity restoring portal, the blue one. We need to make it visible on the stage by switching level costumes. Okay, so back in the player sprite and pick out that blue shade. Nice. This colour will switch up back to one again, restoring things back to normal. Now we can make this a little more efficient, drop in an if else around those two portal checks. We only need to check for yellow portals when gravity is normal, that is when up is greater than zero, and the reverse for the blue restoring portals. That will stop them triggering over and over when they don't need to. Let's make sure the detection is working. Whoops, I missed the portal. Okay, cool. Up has switched to negative one. That's great. Of course, I should be able to test the blue portal. If I can just get the ship to fly. Yeah, up is back to one. Brilliant. That means we can get on with the far more fun job of actually flipping gravity for our cube. For this, we need to locate the define cube movement script. So take, for example, this turn by 15. If we were to simply multiply that 15 by our up variable, then now it will be 15 when up is 1 and negative 15 when up is negative 1. So it turns the exact opposite direction, which is exactly what we want. So the change speed y is the actual gravity, so change it by negative 4.3 multiplied by up. This next if controls the maximum fall rate, 
to avoid switching between less than and greater than, we'll multiply the current speed y by up instead, and then set speed y to negative 28, multiply by up. Now careful, this change y wants to stay untouched. So next up we have the level collision scripts. This if decides if we are travelling down towards the floor or not. Well, that wants to flip, so again multiply speed y by up. Then we have the jumping code. Set speed y to 28 multiplied by up to flip that too. Okay, so that was my first pass. Did we miss anything? Let's give it a go. Smash the green flag and flip. Gravity. Oh, um, hold on. Right, something is indeed wrong. My first guess is that perhaps I'm travelling too fast into the ceiling and it's glitching out. Let's reduce the maximum fall rate from negative 28 down to negative 22. Bother. I was expecting that to work. Don't you hate it when you have bugs like this? Well, just know that it happens to everyone. It's just part of being a coder. So it must be something to do with the collision code? Oh, look. The move out of level block here. It's moving up out of the collision with that one. But when gravity is flipped, it should be moving down. Just drop in an up variable and that should fix that one. Yes! Houston, the eagle has landed! And also nicely flipped back down to the floor too. How cool is that? And I can jump as well. Ah! Don't ever fall into space! No! Now, you may have noticed that while on the ceiling, the player's particles are being emitted out of the wrong side of their body. Uh, let's fix that. Click into the particle sprite. And here, where the mode is cube, we change y by negative 16 to move the particles to the player's feet. So, negative 16 multiplied by up. <laughs> yes. And then also this speed y, that pushes the particles upwards. So again, multiply that random number by up to flip it. Green flag, and we flip. And that did the trick. Nice. Yes, next we'll work on inverting our ship's gravity too. Let's address the ship's particle effects first in advance since we're still here. The only thing that needs to change is the turn block here that directs us down towards the thrusters of the ship. Multiply 90 by up. OK, nothing much to test here yet, so click back into the player sprite and we'll check out the player's costumes next. A problem we have here is that although we can turn this ship 360 degrees, we don't have a way to flip it upside down, but still face right. So what we'll do is duplicate our ship costume and add a negative one to the end of its name, ship minus one. Then click on the flip vertical button to do the job. Next up, we'll go to the first ship costume and rename it, adding a one to the end, ship one. And although we don't need a flipped cube costume, it will make it easier if we can duplicate that too changing the name to cube negative one and the first cube to cube one. This change is going to require a small alteration to our costume switching code. The first is in the game on event receiver here. All we need to do is join the game mode variable with our up variable to form the full costume name. Now, if you have already implemented skins, then you'll need to join with that too. Since we are having to set the costume multiple times now, how about we formalize this in a new custom block? Name it Restore Costume and run without screen refresh. We can pop both the set rotation mode and the set costume blocks in there, and then call it right away with a restore costume, followed by the camera tracking block. Great! Where else do we change the costume? In the when I receive game over script, replace that rotation mode and switch costume with the new restore costume block, and then link it all back together. 
and the same in our level complete script, replacing again the rotation mode and the set costume. There, I think that is all of them. Let's run the project on the ceiling and into the ship portal. Okay, we are indeed upside down. Both the costume and the particle trail is working too, which is excellent news. However, the control scheme is still functioning as if I was the correct way up. And this too needs to be inverted. So to invert the ship's gravity, we need to scroll across to the define ship movement script. And once more, we'll make heavy use of the multiply by up block. Invert the direction of thrust, multiply one by up and negative one by up. Then the maximum up speed becomes maximum down speed, speed y multiplied by up. Capping the speed as usual to 12 multiplied by up. Then we have the minimum down speed, speed y multiplied by up. Then setting speed y to negative 10 multiplied by up. The actual change by speed y is unchanged. And in fact, that is it. So let's give that a shot, shall we? Smashing the green flag. And I want to get upside down and into the ship portal. There we go. And I can confirm that pressing space does indeed thrust us downwards now, which is exactly what we wanted. And it looks and feels awesome. You are really going to love this. Now, there's just a few things to clean up before we finish for today. The first is that our camera tracking window needs a slight tweak for the inverted mode because it usually leaves more space below the player so that we can see where we're dropping down to. In inverted mode, that doesn't give us much view of what lies above. So let's scroll over to the camera tracking custom block. And once more, we'll use the multiplied by up trick. But it's a little bit more convoluted here. First, let's make sure that this last camera wise lesson zero check is moved out of this if to run afterwards instead. This is because either ifs will now be able to move the camera downwards. Next, all four mentions of Y position need to be carefully multiplied by up. But that's not quite all. We will also need to multiply the whole round operations too. Something like this. I told you this was convoluted. I'll give you a second to look over that and make sure yours is correct. And then we can give it a test. Okay, now we should find that we get to see a lot more level above the player than we were before. That's great news when we are falling upwards. And lastly, what about inverted jump pads and rings? when placed on the ceiling. These need to trigger the player to jump downwards now. For this, we will need to locate the define check transporters script and upgrade our set speed wise with a multiply by up, of course, for both the 40.5 and for the 29. And let's check that out. Up we go. And boing! <laughs> Very fun. What about for a jump ring? Yeah, this has turned out perfectly. I can only imagine the level designs you guys will mash together with the jump pads, rings, anti-gravity portals, ship portals, cube portals, and the standard gravity portals. So please do keep submitting them to the official Scratch Studio linked under this video. It's such a joy to see and play the community's projects. If you enjoyed the video, then please take a moment to give it a like and make sure you subscribe so as not to miss the next exciting episode when it drops. Also, if you have any ideas for what we should cover next in this series, then drop me a comment. Well, that is it from me today. Thank you for watching. 
Have a great week ahead and scratch on, guys. Bye.